mock interview helps you to get that feedback from a third person, you know, the third I, you would say, like someone who is not uh, going to actually hire you, but you're giving, getting the feedback. So mock interview is really important. And so what an ATS does is basically, if you apply through a company's website, your profile will be shown in the dashboard. Okay. But, and it's not that there's an AI sitting there to reject your profile. Okay. That's what people assume that AI is going yeah, to yeah. Profile. That's a myth. So once you understand what is the requirement of, uh, you know, what should a basic resume, standard resume look like, it will be easier for you to customize. So first, you need to first understand if you enjoy doing whatever you're doing, you should, you know, pursue that as a career. Another exciting episode of Woman Lexus mini podcast. I'm Arpita Gupta, thrilled to be your host today. And we have got a captivating topic lined up for discussion. Joining us is a remarkable guest from the industry, Karishma Dandona Seti, bringing with her a wealth of experience and expertise. Our conversation will delve into navigating your career path, insights from a LinkedIn top voice, Prepare for an insightful exploration of career strategies and expert advice to help you chart your professional journey effectively. Hello, Karishma ma'am. A warm welcome to Wubel Nexus. We are absolutely thrilled to have you join as our esteemed guest. Your impressive background and achievement, particularly as a LinkedIn top voice, underscore your expertise and influence in the realm of career development. Your presence adds an exciting dimension to our podcast, and we eagerly anticipate the valuable insight and guidance you will share with our audience. Let's kick off this enriching conversation and embark on a journey of of learning and growth together on Google Nexus. Thank you so much, Arpita, for the warm welcome. I'm really excited to be here. And I'm really open and excited to ans answer any of your questions that you may have. Thank you so much, ma'am. So let's start with a quick icebreaker. If you could teleport anywhere in the world right now, where mm -hmm. would you go? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, so I've always been, uh, you know, someone who would, has uh, loved uh, snow, I would say. So uh, my favorite okay. place has been Switzerland. So yeah, that, I think if I would have to teleport, uh, I would go to Switzerland. That's my favorite um, place. Amazing. <laughs> Ma'am, if you could time travel, where would you go to the past or the future? Why? Again, you have all good questions, Arpita. So this is again a very yeah. good question. Uh, I've always been intrigued with history uh, especially okay. uh, you know because my uh, i have a lot of discussions with my husband because he is kind of almost we have a generation gap so he comes uh, from uh, that background where we he was uh, you know in the 80s 70s 60s how that uh, how india was after the independence that era oh, not wow, amazing it. So I would always love to go in the past during that time because my ancestors also, like my grandfather, have been through that, uh, you know, partition phase and also I always hear okay. these stories. So I would love to be in the past. I know it's, it may sound weird, but I would love to be uh, go back to the past and see how, uh, you know, what what was India like just after independence. So that and that is always intriguing. So I would love to go in the past. Yeah. Amazing. So ma'am, if you could have three wishes granted right now, what would you wish for? Oh, good health, first of all. Yes, uh, good health. Okay. That is really important because I have two very young kids. Um, I would uh, really want uh, to be more, uh, to be someone who ha can create an impact. So that is one, my second wish. Uh, good health is, of course, going to be. First. And of course, the third would be good money. <laughs> so uh, money, who doesn't want money, right? So yes, yeah. these are the three things I would love to you know? I wish all your wishes do comes true very soon. Thank you so much. <laughs> if you could create a personal mantra for yourself, what hmm. it would be? Okay, yes. Uh, I need a lot of personal mantras. Uh, so I think uh, to stay... Uh, right now, I'm in this phase where I need to focus on my health because I think sometimes I work a lot. So I'm okay. kind of neglecting my health. So my personal mantra would be to... Uh, focus on health 
and uh, you know, give that as much priority as I do to my work. So because I'm a workaholic, so I think I sometimes neglect work. So my uh, focus on your health. Yeah, that is uh, health is wealth. That's the mantra I would say. Yeah, right true. Yeah. Okay, so ma'am, can you tell us about your journey from being a recruitment specialist to becoming a LinkedIn top voice and career coach? What motivated this transition? Okay, wow, like this is going to be an interesting story because I've always uh, been in the recruitment industry. When when I uh, was in the industry, I th thought that was a noble profession because I was okay. empowering people. I was giving an opportunity to people, job seekers. I was get, giving them new jobs. People who were unemployed, I was helping them get uh, get job opportunities. But what transition is when, when I actually lost my job during the pandemic? Okay. So I myself lost my job and I was at home for three months. Uh, when I was at home, uh, I wanted to do something. I could, like I said, I am a workaholic. I could not sit at home. I wanted to do something. I was just looking online. What what can I do next? I tried. I mean, I could I do something else? Maybe I'm good at marketing. What else? But I, I mean, nothing worked out initially. So I really understand. I mean, I was really anxious at that particular moment. And okay. um, then then I got an opportunity to work as a resume writer, as a freelance resume writer, right? Okay. So, um, I mean, that was just by chance I got an opportunity. And my first income after a gap of three to four months was uh, 400 rupees to write a resume, right? Just after COVID. Just after COVID, like when people had started hiring remotely, right? Uh, okay. But of course, I got a job after that as well. But that first, uh, that resume writing experience of getting something on my own, doing something different kind of excited me. And that's how I transitioned slowly from write. I started writing resumes, then I started writing LinkedIn optimized uh, uh, profiles, and I optimized my own profile. I worked really hard on writing on LinkedIn, and slowly I got into coaching. And I've got so many opportunities as you must have. You must be aware. You've seen my profile. So that really inspired me that you know, some doing something different, doing something where I can actually you know do something of call call it of my own. It's not that recruitment was not, but of course, I was always working for someone else. Here, I was actually working for myself. And also, like I said, this is, was a second way of helping people, creating that impact. And I also consider this as a noble profession because here I empower students to you know, build their own brand or you know, get, get a job of their, their dreams. So that really is was the motivating factor. Like, in any job, I think what is important is what are you adding any value? If yes, true, true. That is the best job for you, you know. So that was the motivating factor and you know, making that impact. Um, it's inspiring to hear about your journey and your dedication to helping others in their career. Thank you so much, dear. Um, what are the key components of personal branding and how is that important? How can individual effectively showcase their skills and experience? Okay, yes. Personal branding, in fact, is very important these days. And that's why when I coach these students, I focus, I make sure that they focus on their own personal brand. And I think the key components here would be to show your you know, own uh, mindset, like what is your expertise what is your uh, you know what is your experience taught you and i think one if you want to uh, develop your personal brand storytelling is the best uh, you know way to do it so that's the key component storytelling and sharing your own personal experiences and uh, showing your that you are the expert of uh, you know the domain that you are in so uh, i think these are the key components and i told tell them that i have been so late while doing this personal branding because I was on I'm I've been on LinkedIn since you know LinkedIn started in India, but okay. I when I took uh, so much time to develop my personal brand I started actually uh, you know consistently writing since uh, 2021, but I tell the students you have this opportunity right now there was no one to tell me and guide me on how do I utilize LinkedIn but now you have uh, people like me and other coaches so please utilize this focus on your developing your personal brand right from the beginning so you don't have to wait for so many years to you know get that opportunity get different platforms uh, you know where you can showcase your talent or you get better opportunities you get opportunities like speaking opportunities getting interviews uh, you know being sure. called for interviews they you if you start right now when you're a student 
or you are just graduating, you are a fresher, I think it will be easier for you. I agree. Like things will be better. Absolutely. At, at time. Okay. So ma'am, resume writing can be challenging for many. What are the essential elements of a standout resume and how can individual tailor their resume for different industries or roles? Okay. So uh, resume writing actually is, like you said, it's challenging because they don't know the basics of resume. And uh, so once you understand what is the requirement of, uh, you know, what should a basic resume, standard resume look like? It will be easier for you to customize. So first, you understand the basics. What are the key components that are required in a resume, and then customize it as per the job description. So what I and there are these days there are many tools, but what I normally suggest is that when you look at a job description, see what are the key components, key skills required, soft skills, hard skills, both, and compare it with your profile. Whether if anything is missing, please add those skills. So there are three okay. places that I would suggest normally to. Uh, add these key skills and you know customize it first is a summary you need to customize your summary then you need to customize the key skills section wherever you have those key, key skills mentioned you could all and the third is your uh, cover letter if you are sending a cover letter uh, uh, with your resume and these days cover let many people don't send a cover letter because they think nobody is going to read it but the fact is and or the irony is that people appreciate recruiters hiring managers appreciate who people who send cover letters so the the three uh, you know places that you can and uh, use to make it make your resume more relevant to the job that you're applying for is your summary your key skills and the cover letter okay amazing like ma'am when like we are talking about resume so there is one question which mm -hmm. always revolves that some people say that we can attach picture on resume some say we should not so mm -hmm. what we should do the student should attach their image or not so this depends on the industry you are in so for example if you are in a marketing role or in a tech role you don't need your resume a photo on your resume because your field does not require you to show your face most of the time where the resume photo is required is if you are in a hospitality industry you are in a you are applying for a role where you are in like an air hostess role or a hospitality management role executive assistant where you need to show your face a lot to the, either to the client or to the customers that is the industry where a photo is really important because if i'm hiring a person who is like a front office manager let's assume i would really want to see how that person looks because that's the per person uh, who's going to meet my customers on a daily basis right so that sure. you need to have a pleasing personality for an air hostess role that's it's uh, the same that applies uh, any any role where you are actually dealing with the customers directly maybe a car salesman you know i hope you get my point so that is where yeah, your yeah. photo is important other than that i don't think it is important to show your you know uh, attach your fo photo on the resume okay so ma'am when we are talking about resume like people say that make your resume ets friendly hmm. so what uh, other things we should do to make our resume ets friendly Okay, now this ATS friendly thing or ATS, the, the, many of the resume writers have made this as a uh, really big, you know, uh, Actually. clause that, okay, your, your resume is not ATS friendly. No, an ATS is nothing but an applicant tracking system, which okay. helps companies to streamline their hiring process. I have used an ATS before. So what an ATS does is basically, if you apply through a company's website, your profile will be shown in the dashboard okay but, and it's not that there's an ai sitting there to reject your profile okay that's what people assume that ai is going yeah to yeah your profile that's a myth the people are just uh it's a, like wrong information they are just spreading out so that you, more resume writers get uh, the job uh, get uh you know get uh so that you, people come to me okay karishma can you make my you know profile uh, ats friendly and I actually, I take, of course, take the client, but I would also tell that there's nothing as an ATS, uh, you know, will reject your profile. The, what happens is when your profile does not show up in the inbox or the dashboard of the recruiter is the, if your resume is heavily formatted, like you have infographics, you have tables, you have all, uh, you know, all the sorts of, you know, icons meant on your profile and it is not in the right structure that is when your data is not actually parsed into the system into the dashboard and hence it is not visible it's still that your 
application is there it's just that it is not visible to me and then i might have to as a recruiter i might have to download your profile and then look look at it properly right and people especially who use canva uh, to write their resume because canva has beautiful templates right so yeah. they, they use canva to write the resume so that's when the problem is i when i started even i used to write on canva but i realized that this is not helping because when you download it and or you convert it to a different like from pdf to word it totally changes all the formatting so that is something that is not makes your profile i mean not visible so not ats compliant you want to say and the structure is also important uh, arpita so you have to have a proper structure though i recommend not using two column uh, you know re resumes like there's you know one half of your information is on one column half is on the other i strictly uh, avoid those kind of uh, formats because that again will not capture the data properly because like ats is like one single straight form you know it captures the data on that uh, in the same format so that's the uh, that's the reality basically that so there's no uh, ats or ai sitting there to reject your profile and ma'am can you see the standard format like it should be starting with a summary and then education yes. and personal yes. experience how it should be written correct so, so you on the top, top you start with your name and your okay. contact information because that's the first okay. data they will capture summary key skills is the second next section then you have achieve in case you have any achievements anything you want to highlight any awards and all you can add the achievements then your work experience whatever it might be if it's a internship or a full time experience you mention all the experiences in the reverse chronological order and okay. then at the bottom you have your education in case you have any additional certifications then put the certification on top and then your education at the bottom so education comes at the last of the resume yes yes amazing amazing ma'am like this is a great insight on resume writing this is definitely going to help our audience sure ma'am interview sure. preparation is crucial mm -hmm. for job seekers what are the some common mistakes candidate make during interviews and how can they prepare effectively to ace their interviews okay and i think the common mistake that most of the interview i mean the candidates uh, uh, go through is that they have this fear in their mind right there is a fear of the unknown that <laughs> people say that they get scared whether they will not be able to answer they will not be able to you know uh, say the right things at the right moment uh, they'll freeze all of that that's a fear so that and because of that fear they actually make those mistakes otherwise even if they know what they're talking about they'll still not be able to answer it so the first yeah. key is to prepare get yourself ready and uh, when uh, the second thing that i've also noticed is that they don't ask the right questions at the end of the interview they just ask about basic general th things like uh, you know can you tell me about the team size tell me can you tell me the days working days these are not the questions to be asked in the interview these are pre interview okay. questions you need to ask either the recruiter or research by yourself so that is also that creates a very wrong impression when you are interviewing uh, you know in to with the hiring manager or even or uh, the recruiter so these i think these are the things and also like they just don't take it as a conversation they take it more as a uh, rapid fire question so they, that's where they get all very nervous uh, also True. i've seen many good candidates not able to articulate their experience and uh, you know position themselves as the right candidate so what okay. i this is what i actually also do in the coaching sessions where i actually teach them how to uh, position yourself as the right candidate for that particular job so there are key words that are really important for you to understand from the job description from your research and then say those words in the interview so that makes you feel i mean makes the interviewer feel that yes she's the right candidate or he's the right candidate okay. for that, job. that words grabs the attention exactly so first i i also first mistake is lack of preparation because you're not actually preparing you're just preparing for the interview of what you're going to say but you're not preparing for what they want to hear from you on the particular job role on the particular job role about the company say for example a very simple example i would like to give here is that if the company has a particular vision and that is mentioned clearly on the website that they have a vision or a mission that they are on or they have x type of customers which they are really you know passionate to empower 
you have to position use that and position yourself as you are, that you align with that goal somewhere in the interview you have to align with that mission and the vision of the company only then will the person interviewer feel that yes you are the right candidate for this job right like so candidate's that, vision must be aligned with the company's vision exactly otherwise why will they hire you they are high, looking to hire you even if you are a fresher there has to be some value addition you can do like maybe it could be your willingness to learn maybe it could be your uh, you know your adaptability that you can you know you can adapt in a or you can work harder you can work under pressure whatever i see this problem because most of the people who my coach are uh, you know freshers they feel that ma'am i don't have any skill how, what do i do you know how what do i say in the interview hey i don't have any hard skills i don't have any solid experience i have just worked as an intern i've just done some projects so if you don't have any hard skills experience you can actually showcase your qualities as a skill you know like your willingness to learn your adaptability your uh, your your problem solving skills these are also soft skills which are equally important for the job so i think that is that is the best way to prepare and, and these are the you know important things that you need to focus on when you are in the interview amazing like ma'am at the end of the interview generally recruiters ask that what's any question from your side so ma'am how to how students should tackle this question yes so there are many questions actually i have a set of it but just to give you an idea so there are very important questions so the questions have to be focused on your role in that organization so if i am interviewing i would ask them uh, so can you tell me what would be the biggest challenge that i might face if i come into this role how so i can prepare myself or you can ask me how does the first 30 days look like right or what what are you expecting from this person who in this uh, job so what is your expectation so you understand the expectation so you, what you what you are trying to show here is that you un- understand you want to make sure that you perform give your 100 percent and you perform the best yeah. in that role and hence you are asking these questions for your own development and you pos- you are actually visualizing yourself in that role and hence you want to know how best you can perform in that uh, in that job so that gives a very good impression in front of the interviewer amazing insights um, like ma'am could you share some insight on importance of soft skill in career advancement and how can individual develop and demonstrate these skills effectively okay soft skills okay soft skills are really crucial and i think we all use those soft skills in our day to day life one is uh, your interpersonal skills how are you able to interact with the person right these are the this is a basic basics i would say this is the foundation everyone needs to have the, these skills second would be your team work and these there are many behavioral interview questions that you will come across in the interview around team work because that's also a soft skill where you need to pos- position yourself as someone who has that uh, who's a who's a team player who has that ability to work with team who can resolve a conflict so team work is the second i would say uh, the third i would again be more uh, i would say focus on problem solving because even whatever role you are in tech non tech problem solving is a very critical uh, soft skill that you everyone needs to have okay like whenever there's a problem uh, you face in the organization how do you handle how do you react to that situation do you get, do you get panicked do you you know or do you actually think about a solution come up with the proper you know proper solution and what uh, what which gives you the right outcome so these are the three skills which are really important and you can have, you have to showcase it through your answers so these are so th- these would come as behavioral interview questions where you will be asked some say for example so tell me about a time you had a problem while you were working at you know on a project or a, a, in your job how did you overcome it? so that's the question where they are analyzing your problem solving skills and you need yeah. to answer it in the star method and uh, give uh, you know share your experience and then that will give them the idea about how, are you really good in problem solving or not amazing ma'am what are some practical tips for optimizing a linkedin profile to attract recruiters and potential employers especially for recent graduate and early career professionals okay so first is of course you need to have a good profile picture 
that's a good head shot okay, okay. Yeah. so i've seen many students also they have a good uh, image with the coat and all they're wearing that you know college coats that uh, the, the, the you know college gives them or but the background is either they are standing on uh, in a garden or on, against a wall so no okay. there has to be a plain background so your face is proper visible properly it's not it should be not it should not be a long shot or a group photo or a selfie those are big no no so you need to have a good profile picture because that shows your uh, you know your facial features are uh, you know important and people can look at your profile and understand you a little better now apart from that i think <clears throat> mentioning your experiences are, are really important experience section uh, any certification that you have done apart from your college and you know, all please add that um, okay. i would i would always suggest uh, to utilize the featured section in the linkedin profile so there's a featured section yeah. where you, you can showcase your achievements you can show off little bit i call it the show off section so you show okay. off all your certifications anything that you have done extraordinary any project that you worked on you can include that and that will be a good platform for students and freshers to showcase what they have done because biggest challenge of freshers is that they don't have any any experience so any certification also you have done any where you have done some kind of uh, project please add that and that will give a good platform for uh, you know people who are coming landing on your profile they can see it and they can you know get a good clarity about your experience okay so i think with this our audience are going to manage their linkedin nicely i i hope so too Ma'am, how do you approach mock interviews, and what benefits do they offer for job seekers? Can you share some common areas of improvement you often observe during mock interviews? Okay, <clears throat> so I think to prepare anyone for an interview, because I am an interview preparation coach as well, or interview coach, as you may yeah. call it, um, the best way to you know uh, be prepared for an interview is to mock interview. So I. Um, very strongly believe on in mock interviews and the uh, what benefits mock interview give you is that it gives you a feedback because when you give an interview in an, in the real world nobody is going to give you the actual feedback uh, they they would in get the feedbacks yeah so they will either say you are selected or you are rejected right yeah. these are the only two things they might sometimes say no your experience does not match you are not you know expectation is high whatever these are actually not very generic reasons but the actual feedback is not given to the person to the candidate um, i i have also been guilty of it that because many times we don't get the right feedback so we don't cannot actually pass on the right feedback to the candidates but a mock interview helps you to get that feedback from a third person you know the third i you would say like someone who is not going to actually hire you but you are giving getting the feedback so mock interview is really important and the best way again to prepare is to first is of course do the research be ready with so in my what i do in my sessions is i as give them a proper framework for how to answer tell me about yourself the star method body language and other things and then i see and i gauge them on those parameters once i get those uh, parameters i give them a detailed feedback verbal as well as written that gives them an idea on what are the areas that you have to work on and then you work on that feedback and you do on another mock interview so that's how a mock interview will help you prepare because that feedback is actually the most important key here agree nobody is going to give you the feedback that okay you did uh, you know how you answered the question what was it was how was your hand movement how was your body language right so these are really important elements and to prepare for this is of course you need to first understand uh, the basics of uh, how to answer those questions and then prepare yourself accordingly and work on the feedback many times people just listen to the feedback they don't actually want to work on it but i don't uh, i would re highly recommend that whatever feedback you get from anywhere especially in those 0 to 5 years uh, experience if you fit into that role you need to work on it and then only then you will be able to you know succeed in that and the best way to prepare for an interview is to practice it so mock interview can also come across as a practice mode for you like it's like it's a practice for you like you you're practicing as much as you can and you give the interview 
I agree, ma'am. Like mock interviews can be incredibly beneficial for refining interview skills. Absolutely. And more the advice and feedback you will get, the students can make it more correctly and prepare for the final interview. Yes. Um, career directions and growth can sometimes be daunting. What advice do you have for individual who feel stuck or unsure about their career path? Okay. Now, career clarity, of course, honestly, if I tell you that I am also a victim of it because I also have no, I did not have a career clarity when I started my career. So I've graduated from bachelor's in mass media. Okay, I specialize into advertising, but my first job was into recruitment, right? So, yeah, so I probably am the wrong person to give you this advice, but still, I'll tell what I would like to share is that um, earlier, of course, we did not have that kind of uh, platform of career counseling. I mean, sure, there were you know career counselors there, but yeah, yeah. we did not have access, or you know, our families did not believe in all of that. You know, that was the case. Uh, as you know, but these days I think parents are more open to get you know uh, get the students counselled in terms of the, what career they should pick up, and students also are more aware. So the first thing you need to do, and I also too strongly believe, is that you need to understand what do you enjoy doing every day. Like you have to test out few things. Like you know, you do things like for me for my example, I would say I love talking and I love talking to people. So I chose okay. recruitment because I got an opportunity to speak to people every day, understand them, understand their you know, mindsets. So that was kind of really exciting for me because I enjoyed doing it. So when when it comes to and I'm giving you a very non-scientific, non-scientific uh, way of you know choosing this because I'm like I said, I'm not an expert in that domain. But you need to first understand if you enjoy doing whatever you're doing, you should you know pursue that as a career. And also, like you get paid for. So there's a concept called ikigai. I, I'm sure you are aware of it. Yeah, yeah. So I it's something similar to that. And if you get uh, paid by uh, while you while you what you're doing, and that's the best thing you can. Do. And you there has to be a purpose also. Like the concept is that. Like for example, you're working and in, in, in Google and you are uh, doing this podcast, uh, which you enjoy doing because you get to talk to. People. People get to, you get yeah. insight from different people. So this is something you you want to do, and you will enjoy doing for the next few years, or you know you want to make. And that's how people get into different fields like content creation because there, there's a passion that they have, and then they can make money also from it. So that I think that is what you should focus on. Be it any role, it doesn't matter. If you're passionate about technology, you get into tech roles. You get a, a job in a tech industry. So. Now, passion is really important or enjoying not i would rather passion i would say enjoy what you're doing and then you get the get paid for it as well so amazing that's i agree very non scientific way of giving <laughs> giving career clarity but i absolutely agree like enjoy the work what you're doing yeah ma'am given the often lengthy and multiple rounds of interview process what are the different important interview rounds in a corporate setting and how to effectively prepare for them okay uh, see so these interview rounds are really in you know, case to case in company to company basis so yes but there are many companies who have lengthy rounds of interviews you know two three rounds of interviews so yeah. the I, idea is not to get stressed out in this process okay many people many candidates have come across in my 18 years that they get when will when will the next round happen they continuously pester and you know ask the recruiter ask me like you know when is the next round happening so there are you know we need to understand this is the reality that people who are interviewing also are working and they are working professionals so they're working on something else so they might not be available so hence the interview process sometimes tends to be long so first thing is not to get you know uh, worried about it or not to get stressed yeah. about it the, the anxiety level has to uh, go down it should not you should not be anxious basically second is that keep your options open it's don't depend on one particular job only okay. right so if you have if you are a fresher or a zero to five years experience and you are only are banking on one particular job then it's going to be you are obviously going to be anxious right 
सो इफ यू हैव मोर ऑप्शन योर एंगजाइटी लेवल विल ऑटोमेटिकली कम डाउन बिकॉज यू नो अच्छा जी यहाँ नहीं है तो आई हैव सम वेर एल्स टू डू आई हैव टू थ्री ऑप्शन आई हैव एन इंटरव्यू एट वन एन वन ओ क्लॉक आई हैव इंटरव्यू टू मोरो यू हैव यू आर रिलैक्स दैट वे सो दैट एंड अनफॉर्चुनेटली दिस प्रोसेस इंटरव्यू प्रोसेस कैन बी चेंज बिकॉज ऑफ मल्टीपल बिकॉज एर मल्टीपल पीपल अराउंड यू नो इन्वॉल्व इन दैट प्रोसेस सो कैंडिडेट्स रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी to be relaxed and to have multiple options so that that in diverses that's my suggestion uh, we cannot do anything about the corporate process so uh, let us uh, control ourselves and uh, be focused on what we want to achieve so mom when we are talking about interview rounds i agree that each company has different rounds of interview but mm-hmm. there are some common rounds which are fake like hr round technical right. rounds group discussion so what are the tips and tricks you would like to give to the students and audience to like crack each of the round okay so let's start with hr round people okay. think hr round is the very simple or basic round right yeah but hr is actually a very uh, very important role here because they are like the gatekeepers true they will not let you in unless you actually fit the bill or there is a high chance of you there's like 80% match or you, they feel that conviction yes this is the right candidate because if they elect the wrong candidate inside it's you know it's a matter of their job because they are the ones who are actually responsible for picking out or spotting the talent so um, you have to be very careful in the hr round as well so make sure that you are you know you are again positioning yourself as the right candidate throughout many uh, throughout the entire Uh, experience you have to make sh- the hr also feel that yes you are the right candidate they, you may come across as uh, you know them as okay no there she's just the hr no this is a very b- big mistake that you know many candidates do that hr ko aise hi samajh lete hain and this reminds me actually of an experience where i uh, was uh, hiring for a particular company and this candidate i i spoke to that candidate he gave the interview and he was very rude to me from the beginning from the call he was very rude to me but i did not mind it i just let him do the entire process and he got the job he got the offer and then he is calling me and saying karishma i'm really sorry i was really rude to you in the beginning thank you so much for giving me you know showing me this opportunity so it's like i mean of course it's not something to be bad but there are candidates who don't think of hr as the right you know that they are just an hr and there are many memes also uh, going around these days so uh, but hr is really important because they actually spot the talent and they only tell you tell the hiring manager yes interview this person this is the guy and there are multiple people but they are the right they are the gatekeepers like i said so you have to make sure that you treat them well and you also make sure that you uh, You deal with them in a very diplomatic way. Agree. So totally. they will ask you questions about yourself. They will ask you salary expectation. You need to make sure that you uh, ask them what is the sal what is the salary that the company is offering and all. And then you be very tactful with them and at the same time very polite and dip- diplomatic. So diplomacy is the key here to deal with okay. the HR. Second, uh, you said is uh, te- the group Technical. discussion. Technically, yeah. okay. so technical round i would say so i have not experienced so i have never taken a technical round but i have always i have seen some technical interviews per se uh, but uh, so your i think the focus is mostly on your knowledge and experience if it's a technical round when you say uh, how do you uh, answer those questions any field it might be so your you have to give real world examples if it's like, let's assume it's a digital marketing executive position So you give real world examples. Whatever your knowledge you have, what is the, uh, you know, what is the, the experience, past experience that you have? Prepare on all all those questions. You know, what could they ask? So research on the common questions, or see any. Uh, go on to the glass door. Go on to uh, ambition box. These are the websites where they share what are the past interview questions that have been asked for those positions. See if you know if it is matching, and you can prepare on those questions. That so research is really important in the technical round because there your knowledge and your past experience will be gauged. so you, the best way to handle those questions is to research, research and prepare okay here so research is the secret weapon research is really and, and honestly in my uh, sessions also when i when we uh, work when i work with individuals when i work with students if you are not ready 
and if, why do you want to get into a job uh, you know without doing any research and then regret it later it's going to only show um, as a bad uh, you know experience on your resume rather than uh, so to avoid it better you research about the company go make sure that you are getting into the right organization i remember earlier when i was working i just joined one company without research and early when i'm talking when i was just into recruitment i joined the company i went there i worked exactly for 5 days and i left the company i just left i i just did not go back to the company because the work culture was so bad the environment was so bad you know of course there's something that you can't actually gauge at that particular time and i'm talking about 2006 or 7 i don't remember exactly i think 7 yeah so you don't i mean that time we did not have those these kind of you know glass doors and ambition box to research about the company there wahan pe to kabhi uth ke chale jao whatever you know company you are there you you can take it up but now you have the option so research make use of it research prepare and then you will be able to get the project uh, get the interview the third one you said is group discussion group discussion so group discussion rounds are basically just to see your house you know your creativity your spontaneity how can you you know how you, what how can you speak spontaneously on on a particular topic right and if you are able to convince the person you know group discussion mein kya hota one person is against and one person is yeah. uh, for that so those are the skills that are gauged so for that again you need to be a little bit more vocal practice speaking uh, see what are the common topics these days you know, those are the group, which could be a group discussion topic like recently i was doing a uh, you know five day workshop and where i had given actually speaking topics to each of the students right so okay. of course i was going through you know i've had gone through different sites and i've i picked out some uh, uh, topics where i was uh, i gave these are very common topics they can speak on so for example should children be allowed uh, using phones or not these are common topics so that's something that you, you need to use your common sense also and think about that topic and you know be spontaneous about it so th- there you will have to actually be more well versed with uh, the what's happening in the world so the, that's again like, again it boils down to research to be prepared that is important and, and they can uh, practice around it practice around it and uh, the skill that they are looking at is how well you can speak and how well you can uh, what are the things that within a time limit if it's a time limit thing within 2 minutes or 5 minutes what all you can come up with uh, points you can come up with so it's basically it's also thinking engaging your spontaneity your creativity your you know your uh, knowledge about that subject amazing like i think these are like hr tips and technical and gd tips are definitely going to help the audience and they are going to research more and practice to be perfectly fit for the interview yes i'm um, could you please share a personal experience where your mentorship played a pivotal role in navigating a challenging career decision or opportunity and how did your or guidance influence their path okay okay so there are many actually so um i would like to tell you about my first client okay, okay. so he was a very senior professional so okay. after while i just started writing resume his linkedin profile i got a uh, you know message on linkedin uh, from a very senior person and he uh, said that i would love to you know uh, have a call with you so i said okay i booked him a free call and uh, where he mentioned that he would like to go through the entire interview preparation i said you are an experienced okay. person you have 25 years of experience you have worked with all top notch companies like nestle uh, your uh, bharti at uh, three four, vodafone all of these top notch companies you had worked with all top companies plus 25 years of experience so why do you need coaching from me and i'm just starting out so he said um, he said i've always uh, whichever companies i've worked with i've always been referred to in that organization i have never given okay. a form, formal interview now after 25 years i am actually going out in the job market i am actually going to search for jobs on my own and i am going to apply and going to go through the process so i have no clue about the process so i was really shocked and i said okay i can do it so and uh, l- let me tell you he was my first client i had never coached anyone before that oh wow 
yeah so that was the first hand experience for me as well so i was uh, you know i was ready okay let me prepare i told him that this will be the charges and all that he said okay i don't mind i don't know what happened he was really impressed with my experience or what i don't know he thought i am an hr so i can coach him so i prepared everything i prepared my you know the ppt and also what i will talk about and what will i tell him and i really coached him for 3 months on and off because he was also traveling he was working and also i would say in within 3 months we did around uh, 10 to 12 sessions okay and after 3 3 months i took him entirely through the entire process from tell me about yourself to how to answer uh, the star method the everything the phone interview how to deal with phone interviews all of that so after 3 months he was he uh, he kind of vanished no response no answer no calls nothing i was following up he did not respond so after one month he did not uh, get in touch with me again and after one month he called me suddenly one day and he said that i have got a job thank you so much for uh, your coaching and i was going through the interview process and that's why i couldn't get in touch with you so i wanted to first get the job and then inform you and he still my he still in touch with me he reacts to all my posts and all whatever if i write anything on linkedin he comments he has given me a review so that was my first client that's why i wanted to share that experience although he was a senior professional but like i said he had no experience so that was uh, my first success story and there are many and there was a student also who reached out to me because he although he was in kj somaya uh he i said okay. my has placements no they do train and all yeah. so he said i am but i don't i want one on one training i said okay so i did that same thing happened like 2 3 months we worked together he vanished and again after 15 20 after one or two months he reached out to me saying that i got a job in hdfc very good so i'm uh, i'm really uh, you know these are the kind of uh, stories i would and there are many like i said so these are the two stories that i you know it's inspiring like these stories are actually inspiring ma'am at last what's your message for wubel community okay wubel community so i think uh, the best part of community when when you talk about community i think the best part is to share knowledge when you it's a if it's a yeah. community right sharing your knowledge is the best and that's how i where i come from when i was a recruiter i still used to guide my candidates my own candidates whom who were interviewing with other companies i used to guide them i used to tell them to do this do that i used to do the research for them so that they are well prepared about this so sharing has always been a part of me and i want that all that your community google community should also share knowledge share uh, you know past experiences and work on storytelling so that in through storytelling you can share a lot of uh, experiences that also helps you in so many other skills like if you learn this art of storytelling you will be able to you know get so much more of, out of that experience like you can you. Uh, you know you can develop so many skills so share knowledge work and you know share your experiences through storytelling i think this is uh, one message that i would like to share okay thank you so much ma'am for for your invaluable insight and experience shared with us today your expertise as a leading figure in interview coaching and linkedin optimization has added depth and inspiration to our discussion your insight have left a lasting impact motivating us to strive strive for excellence in our career and viewers we sincerely grateful for your time and dedication in enlightening our audience with your knowledge and wisdom and ma'am we will be reaching out to you with a formal request to join wubel as a career mentor delivering your expertise to empower our community further sure thank you so much arpita it has been a pleasure to be here and like i said i love uh, you know sharing my knowledge and insights i really wish you all the best and the wubel community all the best thank you and so much like i said please feel free to reach out to me anytime and i would love sure, to share ma'am. and guide you guys and your entire community thank you so much thank you so much ma'am have a good day ma'am you too take care bye bye bye, -bye.